Welcome, friends, to the animation experience at Conservation Station. Since the 1930s, Disney animators have put their pencils to paper in service of the idea that the greatest inspiration often comes from the magic of nature. Walt Disney himself understood the importance of spending time around animals, studying their behavior and personalities in order to create realistic characters and dynamic storylines. This meeting of the human and animal worlds sparked a legacy of storytelling that has shaped our relationship with animals and conservation forever. Today, we invite you to become a part of that legacy as our own Disney artists help you learn to sketch characters inspired by the very animals found here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Get your pencils ready because here comes our animation artist now. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Animation Experience. Well, I'm glad that three people are excited. Um, my name is Josh. I'll be your instructor for this class. Before we begin, I want to go over some very important housekeeping items that you're going to need to know about. Uh, the most important thing you need to remember is that if you need anything in our class here today, anything at all, it really doesn't matter what it is, uh, please do not get out. Just raise your hand up real high in the air for me. One of our cast members here in the theater will be more than happy to come by and help you out. Also, uh, if you need to leave the theater early, we do ask that you do two very important things. Uh, firstly, if you'll take your pencils with you, please do not leave them on the floor, the seats, the clipboards, or any other place that they do not belong. Um, please place them in the, uh, if you do not want them though, um, you can place them in the bin over here by the exit on the right hand side there. Uh, that's where we recycle the pencils. Also, uh, if you could place your clipboards back on the seats exactly the way you found them, we'd greatly appreciate that as well. Now, in today's class, it is my great pleasure. Pre blah, blah, blah. You know, English words are hard. Um, it is my great pleasure uh, to teach you guys how to draw a brand new character from the brand new movie, Disney's Wish. We get to teach you how to draw Valentino the Goat. One person, thank you. All right. Uh, anyone out there seen the movie yet? Anyone out there? A few people seen the movie? All right, great. Uh, now, for those of you who have not, do not worry. Um, we're going to give you a little sneak peek uh, at the movie, and also uh, we're going to have a little talk with the uh, some of the heads of animation that worked on the movie Wish. Uh, so hopefully that'll inspire you to draw Valentino. So uh, if you're ready, we uh, wish that you would sit back, relax, and watch this. Hello everyone and welcome to the animation experience at Conservation Station. I'm Becky Brzee. And I'm Wayne Unton from Walt Disney Animation Studios. We both had the privilege of being the heads of animation for Wish. Wish is an all new musical adventure that celebrates the power of a wish, something that has been the hallmark of some of your favorite Disney stories over the last hundred years. As the company and our team at Walt Disney Animation Studios celebrate our 100th anniversary, I can't tell you how excited we all are to be bringing this story and these characters to you all when Wish hits the big screen. And today, you're gonna learn how to draw one of our new characters in the film. We cannot wait for everyone to see what we've been working on with this movie. But until then, we look forward to seeing your wonderful drawings. Have an amazing time today at Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park. And be sure to check out Wish only in theaters on November 22nd. All right, now, you may have noticed that you were not given an eraser when you came into our classroom today, and we did that on purpose. And the reason is because, well, honestly, we'd like to end this class on time. Okay, uh, so instead of erasing, I want you to draw lightly because the lighter you draw, the less you'll have to worry about any mistakes that you make. Now, you may have also noticed that we've already gone ahead and done the first steps, two steps for you. Now, believe it or not, this is not what cartoon, uh, this is actually how cartoon characters start off. We don't actually start off with eyes, nose, or mouth. We actually start off with a basic shape uh, that kind of represents what we're about to draw or kind of is the foundation of what we're about to draw. And just to make sure that I'm on the right page here uh, with everybody, uh, shout it out when you know it. What is a basic shape? A circle is one basic shape, yes. Squares, triangles, rectangles, yes, these are all basic shapes, okay? Uh, and if you want to become a really good artist, learn how to break things down into basic shapes. So that way you can uh, start off with a foundation and build from there. Now, um, when artists draw, we also don't generally use our uh, memory to draw these characters. 
we have what we call model sheets with us. Uh, in fact, as I'm drawing the uh, class here today, I'm going to be drawing from this little model sheet here. So this is kind of what your drawings should look like at the end of the class. Okay. Um, now this is, I'll give you a little bit of time if you want to take a mental picture or actual take a picture if you want to. This, so that way you have a model sheet to work on with, uh, with it too. But uh, this is basically what your drawing should look like at the end. Okay. Uh, now, let's begin. So we're going to start off actually with something very, very easy. We're going to start off with this little frown here. And what I want you to do, and I know this is, might be hard, but I know you can do it. I want you to trace it. Okay. Now some of you may sweat over this and that's okay. But you'll be fine. I promise. <laughs> By the way, if you're already stressing about this, this class already, I want you to really consider taking a vacation. Like, I want you to consider that, okay? Just really consider it, because it sounds like you need it, okay? Please remember that this is a fun drawing class. If you get stressed, or your whole world just starts to crumble around you, stop what you're doing, take your paper, turn it on the other side, and start drawing whatever you want, okay? All right, remember this is drawing karaoke, not, not college course, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to take the sides of that frown you just drew, and we're going to bring them all the way down the middle. Now you want to draw this nice and light. When you're done, this sh nose should now look like a puffed up triangle. By the way, goats have a really good sense of smell. Um, they can smell very well. That's how they identify their food. Um, but did you also know that goats use smells as a way of communication? Okay. Just like your uncle after Thanksgiving dinner, letting him know you've had enough. Um, so yes, uh, smells uh, do communicate things, uh, and they're not the only animals. Actually, uh, also gorillas uh, also use smells as a form of communication. So if you go down to uh, Gorilla Falls and you smell something weird, it's the way they communicate. So uh, it's really, really neat thing that a lot of animals actually. Now we're going to add in his nostrils, and what we're going to do is we're just going to add a little hook here at the bottom in his nose. Now, this is not a spoiler for the movie because if you've seen the trailer, um, then uh, you've seen this in action. Um, however, if you're trying to stay away from spoilers completely and you don't want to hear anything, you can just put your ears, your, hand, your fingers in your ears going la 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 for just a couple minutes. But um, in the movie, Valentino is a young goat who actually gets the ability to speak, okay? And um, his voice is provided by a voice actor named Alan Tudyk, okay? Now, some of you may know Alan Tudyk for his live action roles. Some of you may know him from his cartoon roles. Um, I first encountered him from a show called Fight or Fly. Um, but he has been um, a big part of Walt Disney Animation in the last uh, 10, 10 years or so. We're going to add the next part of the nose, which is going to be what we call the nose leather. Uh, but I'm sure a lot of you... Uh, not scientists would call this the booper. Okay. Now we're going to be drawing his nose a little at the side. When your nose is at the side, sometimes it can, you can kind of see the bridge of the nose. So what we're going to do is we're going to add that bridge just by adding a little curve here coming on the left hand side. He has a snout because goats have snouts, but uh, because he's a young goat, we want to give him a very short snout. Next, we're gonna go ahead and start drawing his eyes. We're gonna start with his left eye first. We're gonna start right in between these two guidelines. And what I want you to do is I want you to draw in an egg. Okay, draw an egg. Okay, now for some reason, a lot of people out there uh, get stressed out when they draw circles or ovals. Don't ever get stressed out of drawing an oval. Why? Because ovals are imperfect by definition, okay? You can never draw a perfect oval. Guess what you drew, draw if you drew a perfect oval? Circle. Do we want a circle? No, so draw a horrible circle. That's what, a, that's what an oval is, it's a horrible circle. Okay, over here on the right-hand side, we're gonna go ahead and draw in an arch or curve. It's gonna come very close to the guideline down there. Now I'm gonna go to the other side, back to the start here. 
Um, I'm not going to start at the beginning, but I'm going to draw a little curve that comes down just a little bit more. And then I'm going to connect those two shapes. Now, why did I draw this eye a little differently? Well, because um, we're going to give him a little bit of attitude. I don't know if you, again, see the trailers, but Valentino does have a little bit of an attitude. So we're going to give him that attitude and bring that personality out on him, uh, of him. Now, we are drawing a baby goat, and since we're drawing a baby goat, we do need to look, make him look cute and adorable. And one of the things that we need to add is eyelashes. So we're gonna start at the top of the eye here, over here on the left. I'm just gonna add an extra little curve that comes out of the top of the eye. And I'm gonna thicken that up just a little bit. This usually gives a very innocent look to a young character. So a lot of times with younger characters, we tend to bring, uh, tend to give them nice big thick eyelashes. They look young and innocent. Now, Alan Tudyk has been doing has been doing um, animated films for a very long time, but with Disney, he's been actually in every single Disney film uh, since Wreck It Ralph. Okay, um, so he has been in every single Disney film. Now, can anyone name at least one uh, role that he played in a Disney in a Disney animated film? Hey, hey, yeah, he did all the perks for uh, Hey, hey. Um, Aladdin, he was not in Aladdin, no. Anyone else know anyone? King Any other? Candy. King Candy, yes. Uh, fun fact, he actually got that job as King Candy because he did a very spot-on impression of uh, the Mad Hatter, um, which we'll come back to later. Anyone else? The weasel from Zootopia. Do you know what his name is? Weaselton. Duke Weaselton. Yeah, and uh, which is actually a joke uh, by the uh, animation team because he in Frozen he played uh, the Duke of Wesselton. Okay, uh, so he's the Duke of Wesselton and Duke Weaselton. <laughs> Get it? This is okay. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, let's go ahead and add another staple of very young characters, very cute characters. Uh, we're going to go ahead and draw in his big old pupils, okay? So we're going to draw some big circles. Did you know that circles are the only shape your body can make naturally? Did you know that? The problem is a lot of people use the wrong part of their body to make circles. A lot of people use their wrist. Don't, because your wrist is not supposed to make circles. It's not really made to do that. Uh, however, there is a part of your body that is... It's your shoulder. Why your shoulder? Because your shoulder is a ball and socket joint, making it move in, guess what? A circle, yeah. So if you just keep your arm nice and still and just move your shoulder, you can actually make much, much better circles. Any other roles that you guys know that uh, Alan Tudyk played? Anybody? No? Well, uh, a couple other characters he played. Um, he played uh, some random guy in Frozen 2. Um, he played Nose Moore in Wreck-It Ralph, Ralph Breaks the Internet. He was the <laughs> Squawks for Pico the Toucan in Encanto. Um, he was also the Animal Noises for Tuk Tuk in uh, Raya and the Last Dragon. So yeah, he's been a lot of different characters. Uh, over the years. Next, let's go ahead and add a little reflection of light inside of his eyes. We're just going to draw a little, little oval. One of my favorite stories, though, is uh, how many of you have seen the new, the brand new short that came out recently, Once Upon a Studio, celebrating the 100th anniversary? Uh, so in that film, there's, I believe, over 300, someone correct me if I'm wrong, over 300 uh, Disney characters for over the 100 years and uh, one of those characters, obviously, is the Mad Hatter. Um, now, the original voice of the Mad Hatter did pass away many years ago. Uh, so they actually got Alan Tudyk to come back, and it's a big circle of life moment because he got the job as King Candy doing an impression of Mad Hatter, and now he actually gets to play Mad Hatter in the short. So that's Alan Tudyk, by the way. All right, once you're done, you go ahead and shade pupils in. Shading is not a very important step, so don't worry about it if you can't get it done right now. Now, just so you're aware, real goats in real life don't have circular pupils like this. 
Uh, they actually have more rectangular pupils, which actually helps them to see, um, like, absolutely helps them to see uh, and have a wider field of vision. Um, however, um, they probably wanted to give him these rounder ones uh, because it gives him more of a human-like appearance since he's one of the main vill uh, main villains. I was going to say villains. He's not a villain. He's one of the main uh, characters in the thing. I wanted him to be, like, extra cute. However, I have seen uh, some goats, some animated goats with the rectangular pupils that look really adorable. So, um, anyways, next we're going to add something that's not on a real goat, but we're going to add it to uh, Valentino here, and that, of course, would be his eyebrows. And uh, so over here on the left, we're basically going to draw in a boomerang shape. It's going to go right above the eye here. And if you're not sure how to draw a boomerang, just take a moment and think about it and should come back to you. Yeah. And some of you, it just went over your heads, and that's okay. All right. Over here on the right, um, how many of you brush your teeth every day? Everyone should be raising your hands. Okay, uh, so if you uh, brush your teeth, that means you use toothpaste. So uh, basically this should look like a squeeze of toothpaste. So we're just gonna draw what we call an S curve. Guess what we, guess why we call it an S curve? Because it's shaped like an S. Yes, very good, like the letter S. Okay. All joking aside though, S curves are very important for art so learn practice your s curves as you're gonna draw a lot of s curves when you're when you uh if you want to become an artist okay now for a lot of animated characters we like to hide these eyebrows because generally eyebrows are a human thing animals don't generally have eyebrows uh, so what we're gonna do is we're going to put a little patch of fur that goes around his eyes so I'm gonna start at the end of the right, uh, right end of his left eyebrow. That's a little confusing. It's the one that's closest to the center. We're gonna bring this down just a little bit. We're gonna have it go around the eye. We're actually gonna have it come out of the circle just a little bitty bit. And then we're gonna bring it right back up and have it attach to the circle and go all the way to the other end of the eyebrow. So why are we adding eyebrows to animals that don't have eyebrows? Well. It's Generally because your audience is 99.9% .9 human beings. And since we human beings express a lot of our, our emotions through our facial expressions, and animals tend to use body language when they're showing their emotions, um, we uh, tend to add eyebrows to animal characters so that way they can uh, show that same range of emotions. Now I'm gonna use a little wrinkle over here by the uh, little squeeze of toothpaste. Over here, I'm gonna draw a little wrinkle top here so it's just like his eyebrows are wrinkling. On the right hand side I'm going to draw a little curve. It's going to go down and around the eye and then back to the other side of the end of the toothpaste there. All right next we're going to go ahead and start drawing in his smile. I'm actually going to start over here close to the left nostril and I'm going to draw in a little curve. S curve that comes down to the circle here. We're going to bring this over the line here just a little bit. And then we're going to bring this up slightly at an angle, a little bit more at an angle than what we did over here on the left. Now, if you want to know, uh, if you want to actually not only uh, learn about goats, but actually be able to pet them. We have some goats right outside uh, of the affection section there. So you can, right after you're done with this class, you can actually go out there and pet some goats. Um, over on the right-hand side of his nostril, we're gonna draw in another S curve. This is gonna be a little bit of a color change because the end of his muzzle is a little bit lighter fur than the rest of his face. Over here on the right-hand side, we're gonna draw an S curve. And this is going to come down past the circle just a little bit. We're also going to draw a little line 
coming from the bottom of his nose to the top of the smile there. And we're gonna have his mouth open just a little bitty bit. So we're just gonna draw a nice little curve here at the bottom of his mouth. Now his bottom lip is just gonna be this almost like letter C shape coming out of the left side of his mouth. And now the goat tee. Okay, are you ready? So we're gonna come down here to the bottom and we're just gonna draw a bunch of fur. Here's a trick to drawing fur. Don't think about it. The more you think about it, the more you plan out, the less like fur it's going to look. So just don't think about it. Just kind of draw wherever your pencil takes you. Now near the end of the dimple here on the left, on the right hand side, we're gonna draw a little curve. It's gonna come down to the goat tee. And then on the right, I'm actually gonna bring this out just a little bit more. And then I'm gonna bring it down. To the bottom. Now they got that in place, let's go ahead and add the cheeks. Now, what we want with his cheeks is we want them to be kind of round and chubby, because you know, he's a baby, so he's gonna have big baby cheeks, okay? So we're gonna come over here to the left-hand side. I'm just gonna draw a nice little curve coming outward, and then come down, almost touching the goat tee. Now notice I'm drawing this really lightly. You'll see why here in a bit. Over on the right-hand side, very close to where this guideline comes out, I'm gonna draw this down. I'm gonna bring this over again to the goat tee. Again, drawing it very lightly. We'll see why here in a bit. You don't wanna draw this out too far, otherwise it'll make him look like he has the mumps or something. Okay. All right. Now, he does have little patches of fur at the end of the cheeks here, so what I like to do is I like to add in just some fur kind of jetting out. Down to the bottom there. Same on this side. So you just jet out the fur just a little bit. And then bring it back down to the end of the chin. Get little jets of fur. But we're not done with the fur. We got more fur to go. We're gonna go to the top of the head here. We're gonna draw another S curve. We're gonna bring some fur at the top of his head here. And then you can trace, after you're done with that last piece of fur, go ahead and trace a little bit of the top part of the head. Top of the circle there. Of course, we're also missing some ears. The goats have a really good, uh, very sensitive hearing. You can hear a wide range of high pitches. Um, we're gonna bring this down to this little curve down here on the right-hand side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trace a little bit of the, the circle, but I'm gonna break out and kind of draw another big, long S curve. comes down to that curve there. And then I'm bring it right back up to the fur. It's gonna kind of look like he has a banana coming out of his head. Now very close to the cheek, I'm gonna draw a nice little curve because ears fold. So I'm gonna draw his folded ear. Just like so. On the right hand side, we're gonna draw in, starting very close to the eye, we're gonna draw another S curve coming down and out to this curve. We're gonna bring it around and we're gonna bring it down to the end of the fur. Again, kind of like a banana. And then I'm gonna draw a nice little S curve coming from that cheek also out to the top, a little fold in his ears. Alrighty, now his neck, we're going to start at the bottom of his head. We're gonna draw a little line coming down here to this little blue S curve. Over here on the right, same thing. Just a little short. And to make it look like he's actually wearing uh, the, uh, some clothes, because he wears a onesie in the film, um, we're going to draw in a little curve going across. Just like so. 
And then you can trace the S curve all the way down to the end because this is going to be the top of his collar. Now very lightly, draw a curve that's going to connect both sides of that collar. And then in the middle, draw another curve. Very light. Now the reason I did that is because he has little frills at the bottom of his collar. So we're going to draw in some rectangles. We're going to draw three rectangles. One, two, three rectangles. And then I'll go back and I'll trace it. I just won't trace the bottom of the rectangle. Just tops and sides. Now you got a frill. He also has a little bit of designs on his uh, collar here. They go triangle, diamond. Guess what's next? Triangle. Very good. Guess what's next? Diamond. Guess what's next? Triangle. Very good. Now, on the ends here, I like to add just the little point of the triangle, just so it looks like it's going around his, his neck. And then after that, if you want to, you can add a little curve here coming from the bottom. Comes back, and over here on the right, just a curve showing a little bit of his chest there. I almost forgot you can shade in the eyebrows as well because they're very, very dark brown, almost black. Now remember, folks, I always highly suggest going out and learning more about animals. And goats are no exception. There's over 200 species of goats in the world. We have four of them here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Most of them you can go out and pet um, right at the affection section. We have the Oberhalsey goats, we have the pygmy goats, and then at the end of the safari, you can see the Nigerian dwarf goats. So uh, we have a bunch of goats out there. So if you're an artist, I highly suggest going out there and learning more about animals, because the more you learn about animals, the more it inspires you to create characters like Valentino here. Um, however, if you are one of those people who are like, no, I don't want to become an artist, well then, still go out in there and learn more about animals, because the more you learn about the world around you, the more it can inspire you to do whatever it is that you want to do. So go out there and learn more about animals. Now I see that a lot of you are done with your drawings and I'm sure that most of you are looking at your drawing right now and you're going, wow, that looks amazing. And there are others of you that are looking at your drawing and you're going, wow. But regardless of how you feel about your drawing, I want you to know that the fact that you actually tried to draw this character means that you have taken your first step at becoming a much better artist. Why? Because you tried. And trying is the first step in becoming good at anything, but you can't stop trying. You gotta keep doing it because the more you draw, the better of an artist you become. And I'm not just talking to you, uh, to you kids out there, I'm talking to you adults too. It's never too late to become a good artist. But regardless of whether you make become a good artist or not, you should be very proud of what you've done here today. And just like any proud artist, don't forget to sign your name. Now, you don't have to, but if you'd like to, you could also add today's date. Today's date being November the 28th, 2023. As you all are finishing up, I'm gonna let you know three things that I want everyone to do before you leave. Please listen carefully to these three things because I want everyone to do them. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to take a moment, look around your seats and make sure you have all your personal belongings with you. The second thing I want you to do is I want you to take your clipboards and place them right back on the seats exactly the way you found them. The third thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take your pencils and or crayons with you. Please do not leave them on the floor of the seats or the clipboards. Please take them with you. If you do not want them, you can place them in the recycling bin over here by the exit, which is where everyone's going to be exiting, right? Right. Thank you so much for joining us, folks. I hope you had a great time. And if you get nothing else out of this class, remember to keep on trying. Have a great day, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you all for joining us in the animation experience at Conservation Station. Please gather your personal belongings before exiting, and remember to take your artwork with you.
We hope you enjoy the rest of your visit at Rafiki's Planet Watch and the rest of your adventure here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Goodbye. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you're already stressing about this, this class already, I want you to really consider taking a vacation. Like, I want you to consider that, okay? Just really consider it because it sounds like you need it, okay?